life is a beautiful mess. A beautiful mess. Yeah. Life is a beautiful mess. A beautiful mess. Yes. Life is a beautiful mess. A beautiful mess. I'm trying, I'm crying, I feel like I'm dying. I'm doing my best. Well, welcome back to Being Human and Other Shit. I am Melissa and my babe Stacy's on here as well. Um, I just wanted to uh, start off with a land acknowledgement. Uh, today we're recording from the ancestral homelands of the Miwok people, and we acknowledge them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. And I'm going to pass it over to Stacy. Okay, so I am super excited about this episode. We have been trying to get someone as amazing as Emma for shit. I think since probably like the first time we did a rough draft of like episodes that we wanted to do, right, Melissa? Yes, yes. And the beautiful, lovely Heather Vasquez, we cannot say more amazing things about Melissa and I got to spend the day with her last week for the last episode. Within 10 minutes of leaving, she's like, I have the perfect person for you. Like, this is her number. And Emma and I have been just going back and forth. So um, we're going to talk about her her work in the sex. I, I don't know how to say it. In the sex field? Is that how you would introduce <laughs> I mean, sex worker, sex field, it's, I don't, I don't know. Okay, that, I, I kind of love that we're <laughs> even starting this way because that's kind of, I think something Melissa and I have ran into every episode where we're like, we don't want to offend people. We like, what is an appropriate way to introduce, you yeah. know what I mean? Cause so I think some people would have a preference on what they're labeled as, I guess, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, um, I mean, for me at the, the base of it is sex work. It's sex for money. So I, I'm not, you know, a no simpler to way to say it. it. Yeah, no simpler yeah. way to say it. But I do. I I know people that are offended, especially people that are paying for said sex work. Do not like the term sex, sex work. worker. What do they prefer? Just to not talk about it. Yes, I guess <laughs> yeah. well, we're gonna blow My up their friend. spot today. <laughs> My yeah. friend that I give money to, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. My home so those benefits. So yeah. that's like also an interesting take, right? Because then there's also shame on the other end, the, the person that's paying for the services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that, that's interesting. shame ridden, uh, shame ridden affair. But, uh, you know, it's we'll kind of snowball like, right into that part. Yeah, I could, so that's why I got into it was to, well, one of the reasons. Um, it was really just about exploring my sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and I started out on this like dating out for kinky stuff. And then there were men on the app that wanted to buy me lingerie and send me gifts. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. I, had, I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. And then my friend was like, oh, you know, you can like do that, really go do that in a real way. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got online and joined this website and that sort of, it started as like a very kink oriented endeavor and then evolved into, uh, you know, I guess more like relationships. So it's, um, it's, it's been very, very interesting. Cause I wanted to j jump into like my things that I was ashamed about sexually, things that I wanted like old, good old Catholic guilt. <laughs> yes, that always shatter. comes back to bite you in the ass. <laughs> Trying to shatter those um, parts of myself. So this has been a really cool way to do that and to like deconstruct shame around sex and sexuality, um, as well as like make some money and <laughs> feel empowered through it. I yeah. love rather that. Than, rather so than, yeah, sorry. No, no, that's like a perfect way. Oh, go on, let's go. Sorry. No, no, I was going to say. We're so excited. You, We're like, oh. I know. I can't, I can't, I can't. No, <laughs> so since you brought up like your, your, you know, Catholic shame and stuff, can you just take us back to like just your upbringing and just like your, yeah. your background a little bit? Yeah. Um, I am the oldest of four kids. I've got great parents, a great family. We're all really, really close. Um, born in Southern California, then moved to Colorado and then back to Southern California. And my, Family, they were raised very Catholic, but my mom sort of gave up as we got older because we didn't like going to church. We didn't, I went to Catholic school for a few years and it was just, it wasn't, wasn't for us. And so I just think, you know, through, even though we weren't extremely religious, there's still that bit, those uh, things lingering about just in conversation, 
you know, sex was something that was sort of kept quiet and you wanted to save yourself for marriage. And then you, so it was just, it wasn't talked about. It was like this dirty thing. It was a, it was something that you should be, you shouldn't be talking about, indulging in, even thinking about. But then, you know, then I, I remember like masturbating at like nine yeah. <laughs> and being like, what is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <What happened? laughs> so, I, was a, I was a late masturbator. And I, once I figured it out, I was like, holy fuck. The bitch can't stop. <laughs> she can't stop. <laughs> I can't <laughs> stop, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite fucking hobby. It literally is. It's on her resume. <laughs> on her resume. Yeah. So it, that's sort of, and I think that's similar to a lot of people. I think most of my friends and peers have a start as, as, at a place of shame around sex and then either break free of it or just stay with it. Um, and I've always just like to poke the bear, <laughs> try and, <laughs> try oh, and uh, you know, grow and get to know myself and what's blocking me from like moving forward. So this is just another catalyst of that I suppose <laughs> moving okay. through moving through life <laughs> yeah does your family know about what you do one of my sisters knows um but that's because she's I trust her because she's not volatile she won't get mad and throw it in my face <laughs> so um which is a common family dynamic I think yeah um so she knows we don't like talk a lot about it but she doesn't she's also very progressive she works with um incarcerated people and she does a lot of you know work for social justice and so she's just very open-minded to all of these things um but you know I'm the oldest and I'm supposed to do things a certain way and I have yet to do anything a certain way so I'm like slowly I'm sure they'll find out eventually I'll I'll tell them but until I get a better grip on exactly like the narrative here <laughs> yeah, and the way I want to be, to present that information to my family. I'm just keeping it to myself. Well, yeah. which also you're like, you don't have to, you know, yeah. and you, it's, really don't. you know, it's my sex life. So it's also things I don't really, especially when it comes to kink, I'm like, I don't want to tell mom and dad about the stuff I like to do. It's just, it's weird. It's inappropriate. And- like our newly found anal world. We were just <laughs> talking about <laughs> my <laughs> mom and dad don't need to know no. about my anal. <laughs> they don't need to know what's going on with my asshole so they do not like <laughs> listen friday night someone's eating my ass it's not your issue don't worry about it yeah so no, please, I Ruth, please turn off your <laughs> i'm talking about her about- <laughs> <laughs> so what do what like specifically do you do as far as like <clears throat> give us like a typical scenario for your work okay so i mean it it varies from person to person, it depends on, you know, what they're looking for. Some men want like a consistent relationship of sorts. So they'll want to meet every week or every other week. Other guys just want more of a, like a one-off thing. And um, I've done both, but yesterday, not, not every relationship I have is um, kink centric. Mm-hmm. The one yesterday um, he's really very dominant and he did, and is into all the bondage and he's the one really into anal stuff. So I'm like, got every toy in the freaking world right now yeah. trying yeah. to figure out how to make this work. Yeah. <laughs> and so I spent like a couple hours a day just trying to put stuff in my ass and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not that one, not that one. Okay. That, not one's, not that, one. that one's not bad. <laughs> yeah, well, I also don't think people realize how much like work it is to consistently do anal. I was like telling Melissa, a friend of mine, who's a gay man. It's like, you've got to clean out your system all day. Yeah, like, you, I don't like, know. It is a job. It's a job. I've, the last week I've felt it's been work. Like, I don't know, <laughs> like depending on like when I use the bathroom, I don't know when that, when I'm clean in there. So I like did an enema and that just made it worse. And I was like, okay, well now I'm just just sitting here post enema like I think I just fucked it up <laughs> so is there ever a time when you say like no when you're like hey this just yeah, doesn't I, work yeah absolutely I you I mostly say no but I'm trying to like because I want to you know I, I want to know everything about everything I want to have I'm like an experienced whore I need all <laughs> <the> experiences <laughs> yes yes so I mean, you want to be good at what you do right like yeah, any of, I, like any of us I want I want to 
if, it, if people are deriving pleasure from this, there's something to it. So I want to, I want to experience that. I want to know what it's like. So I'm very yeah. determined. <laughs> I hope you, I hope you get paid more for it yeah. because that sounds like a lot of fucking work. Period. I'd be like charging for that off time. Yeah. Like, just right? stuck something in my ass, clocking in. Yeah, clocking in. <laughs> <laughs> no, this guy takes, he takes great care of me. He'll good randomly send me money, give, bring me like a bunch of cash in person, you know, he, he's going to help me with my car, <laughs> like all these things that are, he's more of a like relationship person. He has a wife and kids and his wife knows that he's out in this world, but like doesn't want to know. No. Um, I love hearing that. So they had this very kinky relationship, super crazy stuff they were doing together. And then as they got older, I think they're in their mid fifties, she's just doesn't have as much interest in doing all that stuff anymore. Yeah. And he's still, you know, going strong because semen doesn't expire. <laughs> she's like, my butthole is fucking over this shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's like, listen, I need you to wreck baby, somebody else's ass. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so, like, cool, I'll done. do it. Thanks. <laughs> so are you, yeah. Emma, I got are it. you, <laughs> I got it. Hey, you're tag teaming. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and over the baton. <laughs> Emma, do you um are you like open to all genders or is it strictly men that you no, I'm, have I'm clients? Open to, I'm open to all genders. I just haven't encountered any anyone other than men. And I think that's just because men have the most money <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, so they, you know, have that extra cash to spend and it's also a more familiar dynamic for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been very fluid with my sexuality, but I have most of my experiences have been with men. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like my, my comfort zone. I know what's going to happen. I know what to expect. Um, and I'm not sure as many, there's as many women or I haven't, you know, encountered any um, trans people. I haven't it's just been cis men. So it's so surprising for your location. Yeah. Because it's and such a melting pot. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, these things all exist, but I'm sort of, I guess I've sort of like picked a niche to stay in because mm -hmm. it is, it is the easiest for me because it's what I know the best. Yeah. Well, it's also like what pays you. It's the same when I was yeah. a bartender. There's certain people think like when you bartend, it's only like clubs, but it's like, no, there's other places. And I knew what I liked. And, yeah. you know, basically, how can I make the most money for the least amount of work? Exactly. Just it's like familiar to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, you know, men, you know what to expect. Yeah, from I, know. I don't want to overgeneralize, but sorry, guys, most of you guys are the same, you know? Yeah, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty, I've seen this play out before. I know. <laughs> you know I, I know my way around a dick, so yeah. I'm going to stick with that. Rub, rub, squirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much it. Yeah. yeah so, so do you, do, do things ever get like intimate? Like, do you feel like with this specific cli client, right? You call them clients? Mm-hmm. With this specific client that we've been talking about, do you feel um, like an intimate connection to him? Is that something that you try to like keep out of your work? No, I, I'm always down for an intimate connection. That's just who I am. I don't yeah. need to, especially like if I, I'm letting someone into my body, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm particular about it. Not about looks or, you know, I'm not, not like that, but you know, what's your vibe? What's your energy like? Cause once we're together like that, that's something that's with me. So yeah. I'm particular in that way. Yeah. Um, but I'm all for intimacy. I think that's what makes these things special and makes them last. And that's what shatters like the, the shame mindset around it. Yeah. Because then you're having genuine connections with real people and you're not thinking, oh, this is just someone I pay to have sex with. Or this is someone that just pays me for that. Because there's always more. It's always more than that. Yeah. Um, I love that. Because I I always feel um like Kate and I, my roommate, we talk a lot about lately you've been talking a lot about <clears throat> e m like the ethically non-monogamous relationships mm -hmm. and i'm so happy that it's becoming more of like such a common conversation because i'm on dating apps and it's really common on there oh you know, yeah there's a lot of marriages or relationships that have outside partners because i think like gone are the days where you're expecting one person to fulfill all those needs yeah absolutely you yeah. know some people fulfill those other needs with like friendships like platonic friendships some yeah. will have like multiple partners so i love that um we're kind of trying to decrease the shame that's surrounding that you know yeah it's 
it's so refreshing and it's really you know special to see people like embrace themselves in their entirety it's beautiful you know, it's really been it is beautiful yeah and I've seen both in these dynamics and I find like oftentimes you know the way that I'm doing it it is more like a relationship where you're building a relationship with someone that's in its own container it's separate from doesn't bleed out into other parts of your life but it is growing in its own way and I found a lot of times it's people or you know these men that really just want to feel heard and seen and appreciated and it's a lot you know sex is the small part of it yeah in my experience um the rest is uh like you know just listening yeah (laughs) emotional connection yeah emotional support and um I don't know if that's just I don't I can't speak to anybody else's experience but my own and maybe that's just something that is like a something I give out off into the world is being like emotionally stable so I can support so maybe it's finding me I don't really know but pretty much all of my experiences have been like that so that's you're kind really of really cool you kind of started to touch on in the beginning and then a little bit now but like what what like led you to this field like this work um yeah, it was all, it all stemmed from wanting to explore my sexuality and then getting off on like being paid for those things. It was really empowering. And it, yeah. I think, you know, as a woman or as, you know, any, regardless of your gender, when you feel like you haven't been in total control of your body, um, you know, there's been times where I got too drunk and like woke up at some random person's house and I'm like, oh, I'm mad at myself, but also like, that that dude probably knew that I was too drunk to go yeah. home with him and all yeah. these you know, these a series of events like that nothing like horribly traumatic for me luckily but enough times where I felt like I didn't have control of my body and then just you know in the social media everything outside too pushing in saying look this way be this way act this way and this is what's beautiful this is what's sexy so it was partly that partly exploring my sexuality and just wanting to like feel empowered and in control um and this was like a fun way to do it yeah love that that's one of the reasons I love strip clubs I'm gonna be honest because I love seeing women on stage and and to be honest it's like I think everybody assumes that when you go to like a Vegas strip club it's one type of woman right like the big Mm -hmm. fake titties big ass that's not what it's like and that's why I love strip clubs as you go and I mean I've been to strip clubs in the south you know Vegas obviously here where I live it's not something I do regularly it's like a special occasion thing but I love just seeing women up there you could tell it's just like they're up there dancing and just confident and a lot of the times they say the same things when these men are coming and especially their regulars half the time that when they buy a dance they're not even dancing for them they're listening to what they're saying yeah. These men just want like somebody to listen to them, you know? And yeah. I think that's really cool because it, it, a lot of women, there's just like weird eighties movie, like strippers with weird bleached hair, like, you know, just these like whores that are back there, like popping their pussy for money. It's like, no, these <laughs> bitches are like empowered by, by it's this and being so able to use hard. their body for a tool, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like tapping into that, that part of our femininity is really cool again like regardless of gender just having access to that that flow of femininity coming out it's such a powerful and beautiful thing because it's just as like tough as it is soft yeah so we're like we're as badass as we are like like yeah hug me yeah (laughs) yeah and to have the the dynamic when you embrace your femininity is like then you just become a powerhouse you're like unstoppable because people you know, want to the, I feel like when I see a woman that is equally as strong as soft or Mm -hmm. a a man equally as strong as soft, like my dad is like that. It's so cool. He's such a crybaby. He's so emotional, but he's he's just like solid, strong human, but really in touch with that feminine side. And it's always really inspiring. And I'm like, I want to be like that because then you're just like this whole complete <laughs> yeah thing and you have the ability to like really embrace people and yourself and it's like a I think like that's kind of what sex work is <laughs> well 
you are I think that's like such a battle you're we always fight right yeah we also create like this safe space to kind of explore what feels good for you and what doesn't Mm -hmm. feel good for you and you have that like balanced self you know where it's like okay this is uncomfortable and now I can like pull myself back or whatever say no set boundaries it's been great for boundaries because boundaries are a tough one for me I'm always thought of myself as a people pleaser and I just want to like say yes and be there and whatever and this has been a thing where it's like no I won't do this um it's really helped me like advocate for myself especially when it comes to money yeah and to say oh no this is this is the price and I if you can't do that that's okay you know good luck yeah and not compromising my self-worth I suppose or the way that I you know put a number on something yeah in this way yeah and that's I think bleeds over into other areas of my life as a and as a as a woman or as a person that like uh hasn't been I guess someone that just isn't like a you know a white man (laughs) to be able to advocate for yourself in a in a way and say no this is what this is what it is and it, it bleeds out into any any area of your life you know and any job you do relationships all of it yeah so it kind of made my core foundation a bit stronger it sounds like overall this has been like a super positive experience for you in every way like financially <laughs> emotionally much. physically i mean you're putting stuff in your butt like yeah this has been really. just an amazing, <laughs> like expanding. super empowering <laughs> expanding um, in every way expanding everything <laughs> i love that how do you how do you typically meet clients is it like word of mouth is there like app? Um, you, i know you said apps but uh, i'm on a website um that I meet them. And there's a lot of websites that exist for it. Um, this one is like, sort of was meant to be for, I think only married men, but it's not that anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a shit show. <laughs> there's a lot of like scammers. There's a yeah. lot of people that are, you know, wanting just someone to party with, which is fine, but that's not, that's not my cup of tea. It's, you yeah. know, I had a, I basically want me to, come and do like some gangbang for you know a thousand bucks and just walk into like I was like do you understand how dangerous that is yeah Yeah. I don't know you I don't know your friends just to show up sounds like the beginning of a horror movie yeah literally I'm I was like there's no amount of money that I'm comfortable putting myself in that position for hell no and how disrespectful to think that like someone's worth is that you know I was like I just so disrespectful like, comfortable he's like well we wouldn't do it all at the same time you could just like take turns and like you're trying to fulfill some freaky porno fantasy right now you're not yeah. looking for like a human to human experience and I'm sure there are people that that isn't like enticing for but it's just not for me and, yeah, like- and as somebody who like likes porn I mean I'm not like a avid watcher but I don't dislike it I always feel like, like men have this they watch, they grew up watching these like 80s VHS. I mean, maybe I'm speaking for my age group, but like these like VHS tapes of pornos were like bitches are getting like dildos rammed it under their throat. And it's like, there's no, yeah. And they're loving it. I'm like, that's not typical. Yeah. At least not- for most women I know, it's like, obviously my close friends, I know that most of their intimate details because we talk about sex a lot, but like none of them are telling me like, oh, I love when my, my husband throat punches me with a, you know, <laughs> eight inch plastic hard yeah. di- you know it's like that's unrealistic to think that a woman's just gonna sign like your wife or your partner is not gonna just sign up for anything because you watched it on a tape you weirdo yeah it's 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 frustrating sometimes but I also understand that they're there for a specific reason so like I when I encounter those things I try and like respond with the least amount of judgment and like yeah be as least reactive as I can because I don't want to discourage anybody from like trying to fulfill any fantasy yeah or awesome. any. like you just are not doing that with me I'm like that's <laughs> not my thing but I'm you know go go do you yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find somebody but also take yeah. no for an answer because don't keep haggling me and hassling me and then there's people that will literally haggle you I'm like this guy the other day he's trying to like knock down my number I was like I've never been haggled this much like, this isn't a fucking flea market yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. fucking yard sale yeah. and I was like you know I know you can afford it so I'm I'm not 
I'm not budging. Yeah. If yeah. you want to meet me where I'm at, cool. But that's stop trying to like haggle me. Don't don't I don't we're not negotiating. <laughs> yeah. It's just a very so there's a lot of it's like the wild, wild west. It's really just you never know what you're gonna get when you're <laughs> when you're meeting people, but then when you meet the right people, you kind of like I have like sort of a rotating thing with a few different men that some of them will when they're in town we hang out it's just like a traveling thing this guy I'm seeing now is very like once or twice a week um you know we get a we get a hotel I pay for it and everything because it has to be discreet for him and then he just reimburses me and um he's you know more into like uh I forget where I was going with this. Oh, he's so he's been the first like very kinky experience I've had with this. Yeah. Most of them have just been um men that just want to like, you know, have a hot young babe in front of them. And there's like, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> 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 that was like the perfect noise. <laughs> Every man that listens to this will be like, I hate these bitches. <laughs> I know, I feel kind of bad. <laughs> like damn they hate men it's like no I actually really love men so I, I love men yeah that's why I do this mm -hmm. um and so this guy has been a it's been like an interesting like so I, I think I, in the last year or so I've been doing this I found my comfort zone and uh I've established like what I'm into what I'm not into and now I'm ready to take it to the next level and so I'm doing this like crazy kinky stuff which we're it requires a lot of trust and I have a hard time with that like I was tied up yesterday arms to the wall legs to the wall and just there like my hands are turning purple oh my, and my God. ears are numb and I was like am I I can't defend myself no, I <laughs> I like, oh my god <laughs> I have nothing. I could like headbutt him if I had to, maybe. But that's <laughs> all I got. And Push so, your badge okay. on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, but I, I trust this person, and he never pushes me to do anything I'm not comfortable with. But it's been a that's an you know another way of like really pushing myself to, um, you know, really like conquering like parts of my mind <laughs> that I get where I get anxious really easily and I'll have a panic attack this is like mm -hmm. a way for me to you know like claustrophobia or something like to breathe and just like master like find my center and feel peaceful and I'm like okay everything is fine so there's like there's so many things that like weave in and out of this for me personally yeah. as a human, in ways it sounds like a positive experience yeah, it's been incredibly positive. Like, it sounds like everything you're saying, like, has been really positive for even just your own, like, personal development, you know? that That's where I've been approaching it from. So I think that's why it, I've wanted this to be, I kind of knew before I was getting into it that this was going to be something that was really life-changing for me and was going to, like, really take me to the next level as a person. Mm -hmm. And so I... I only see men for the most part that I feel like are can like kind of get add to that. Um, they can add, give me something new to this like experience I'm having, something positive. Yeah. 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 How does how does that like negatively and positively impact your personal intimate relationships so outside really of work? Have any <laughs> personal intimate ones? Um, it's something that I'm now like kind of craving is to have someone that like can give me their full undivided attention. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I went on this date last night sort of just to feel, feel it out. And it's funny because I had the date during the day, paid date, and then I had the date at night. And it's really like become really easy for me to click in and out of, yeah that meant that mindset um and I just you know I don't know like do I tell people this do, how long do you wait before you bring it up I dated a guy last summer for four months or so and I never told him and I didn't know and but then I've dated men where I told them right away so I, I'm still navigating that I'm not really sure um 
because people you know have really strong opinions about this stuff and I think people really love to have opinions, strong opinions about things they don't know anything about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly so, why we wanted you on here. Too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we want to smash that. This is going yeah. swimmingly, by the way. <laughs> Gonna ask for a better, for a better guess, honestly. Yes, you're amazing. This is oh, this is you. awesome. I think it also takes like somebody that is secure within themselves. Like you, you the, yeah. definitely some like insecure person coming into your life trying to date you will, will not survive. Like absolutely the, and the empowered person that you are and are becoming like that they wouldn't hang yeah I I've been this has also changed the um types of relationships I now am looking for and like in my real life yeah and now I'm not so sure I never thought much about like monogamy or non-monogamy and now I'm not so sure that monogamy is for me like I I would like to have one partner I don't want to have a ton of relationships yeah it's just it gets draining um I already do that and it's <laughs> it's kind of yeah. draining um but I'd like to have one partner who's really where we like we move together through this like you know exploring ourselves like we don't have to be so like I'm this is who I am this is who I am and like then we're stagnant like I want to find someone who feels comfortable to say hey I kind of want to hook up with this person is that okay yeah and, me to feel comfortable to say the same so um doing this you know sex work stuff has definitely changed my perception of like what a healthy relationship is and I and I see too a lot of the men I'm with are they are married and I would say it's like a 50 50 of whether their partners know or not and it's sort of I think it's going to help me be a better partner for somebody having had this experience. Yeah. Because I'm learning a lot about what, what these, you know, middle-aged dudes are feeling is missing in their lives and how they like, just like anybody, we just want to feel loved and supported. And I think especially men in their, you know, forties and fifties right now, they grew up in such a different generation where like the stoicism and the toughness and the the um you gotta be a man thing is really like crippling and that's like why the world is how it is <laughs> exactly. and um and at the end of the, you know I'm dealing with really really successful men in New York and they're just the same as like every other human yeah so it's been a you know I'm it's really like just humanized um, this like this idea of what like older wealthy men are like yeah. in my mind or in I think a lot of people's minds so I again like I, I know we were, we've been talking a lot of shit on on dudes but I love men I feel I feel sad for men that they can't that yeah. they haven't had a safe space in this world to like be who they are and to you know the pressure of making enough money to be in a relationship it's a lot of pressure so I I have a lot of respect for men um and you know I I enjoy getting to know that side of them through this that like softness yeah I always feel like that's what it comes down to with men too it's like such a dick measuring contest you know (laughs) like I feel like dating multiple people or like whatever you know your sex life I love how you approach it with such like a open-minded, positive, like, let me understand you point of view. Cause I feel like I would just be like, I'm going to make you my bitch (laughs) (laughs) because you act arrogant. Like now you're going to be my bitch. (laughs) We're going to flip the script right now. Now we're going to see who's in power now. I think that I think the like beautiful thing that you said too, is like, you started to talk about like uh, healthy relationships. Right. Mm -hmm. And so entering like an ethically non-monogamous relationship that's a healthy relationship too when two people are on the same page and can be open and honest that's healthy so it might be yeah healthier it might be hard for people to understand when they're used to you know hiding their freaking like people that they're screwing on the side how is that healthier you you're, you're hiding you're you're being secretive if if your spouse's or partner is uncomfortable with something you're doing, like have that conversation, that's healthy. Yeah. Having a conversation and deciding what 
direction to take it together, not having fucking secret lovers on the side and yes. not saying shit and then possibly bringing fucking STDs and shit back yeah. to your yeah. your wife, your husband, whoever, you know, like when that's also not understanding healthy. a healthy resolution where it's like, yeah, you're you might not be with the right person. Um, we kind of see I feel, feel like we've kind of seen this play out in a lot of like shows lately, like we're kind of like even TVs and TV shows and movies are like catching on where it's like you might, you know, be with a partner a year in and be like, hey, I want to go the e &M route, you know, and um, I kind I met this person I really like, but like you're my person and mm -hmm. your partner might, might not be with it. So it's like, what do you do? Do you like, you know, push that side of you down to satisfy another human being or yeah. do you explore that life? It's it's hard. We could go off on a whole tangent about this. So I yeah. feel like we're getting away from sex work, but <laughs> like, yeah, I, I do love that. You know, you said 50, 50 know about it. And to be honest, that's your client's choice. You are at the end of the day, like providing a service and that's up to them, you know? Yeah. And I, you know, I, I have friends who can be a little judgy sometimes. I, I most of my of friends know what, I, what I'm up to because I'm, you know, I'm not ashamed of it. I don't care. I, I keep it that. from my family because I just don't want just it's sex i don't really want them to yeah i don't my brothers and i don't sit and have coffee and like who'd you bone last night you know it's that, yeah. that would never happen how big was his, yeah. his wiener yeah. <laughs> Vince and I, he's like how deep was her fucking uterus <laughs> never gonna happen that's not family talk that's not christmas table talk yeah no um but oh shoot i forgot what i was gonna say about your friends being judgy some of them being judgy shoot where were we that probably wasn't even that important um it's okay it'll it'll come back to you i actually back. have a question about um you said like okay so for the last person you guys met at a hotel typically is that what happens do you is it do you ever bring them into your space i had a relationship for almost a year and he would come over here but mm -hmm. that's you know after it took a while to get to that point and i was comfortable because yeah. again my home is my like sanctuary i don't yeah. want like you gotta have the right vibes in here otherwise you're gonna f it all up so <laughs> don't come in unless you're like solid mm -hmm. <laughs> so um i'm open to it and that's what i always say is eventually i'm open to it but not until we get to know each other so normally it's hotels and um a lot of times i'll book them uh and it's it, i mean I, I kind of at first it was sort of a strange concept but i got over that pretty quickly yeah um, for me it's just like oh, it's fun i'm having yeah fun. have you ever had a husband like want his wife involved um no not yet but i've had people that you know like a, a guy that has you know a, a sugar baby or whatever want to like bring me into their side thing and uh i I'm not super interested. Like I'm, I'm open to it, but I already have that in my regular dating life. Like there's already a married couple that I'll hook up with sometimes. So I have that fulfilled. And like, I don't know if you guys have ever been in uh, threesomes, but it's kind of a lot of work, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> you're, you're satisfying That's what I've heard. everyone and you're satisfying yourself. It's just like, whew. so that to me, a lot of hands or like work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. Who's this? Where's this? You eventually just, just start touching who's yourself. This? Who's touching me? What's yeah. up? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I've, I've had that uh, people approach that with me, but, um, oh, I did actually, I forgot about this experience. Um, I was with a Dom and his uh, sub, his mistress, and I was submissive to them showed up to their apartment or her apartment in like overlooking Central Park. It was beautiful. And they wanted me to like put on this puppy mask and like a collar and do the whole thing. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, <laughs> so like it. Awesome. Give, give it a shot. <laughs> I'll try anything. And it was funny. I really thought that they were gonna, that they were very experienced by the way that they set up this whole date. And I ended up having to very subtly be in control because they didn't really know what they were doing. So that was interesting. I was supposed to be like bottom, bottom tier, sub, sub <laughs> to the sub, to the dom. And instead I was like very like quietly <laughs> controlling the situation. 
and it was fun. I was, you know, in and out of there in 30 minutes and made a thousand Damn. books and I didn't even, you know, do anything. I just used a toy on myself and that's it. Damn. That's awesome. Like, I don't think they finished that. their reading that Google article on <laughs> yeah. what they were well, trying to do. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely, yeah, they're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. They probably had the best time of their lives, though. Those are the 30 minutes of their lives. Yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting. That um, actually that ties good. into, I mean, I don't know if you consider it the weirdest thing, but that kind of ties into that question. Like, yeah. what is. Oh, yeah. The- yeah. I would say that's one of the weirdest things. For sure, I love that. Is, do you was it a high quality puppy mask? It was. It Movie was like wetsuit material. I was excited. Well, they were ready. Leather thing. I thought I was because I'm really into leather, and then it's like neoprene. I was like, well, then I looked myself <laughs> in the mirror, and I was like, actually, this is kind of hot. Now I get it. <laughs> I, I was like not excited about the puppy mask. I'm like, oh come on, cheesy. And then I was like, oh damn, I could get <laughs> into that. That was good in this puppy mask. <laughs> actually, I'm, like, I'm feeling myself as this puppy. <laughs> Do you have so, anything like completely off limits? Um, not yet. I mean, you know, I don't want blood involved. Yeah. <laughs> like as far as like kink goes, like let's not draw blood and I don't want you to like poop on me. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I remember but, being like an 18 year old kid. And I was working at a hospital and this, well, he was a nurse, but he was like <laughs> the best orgasm I ever had. Was this this girl he was messing with at the hospital I guess he never told me who she was I really wanted to know but there was like a clear coffee table and she sat on it and took a shit and he was like underneath the table I was like bro I remember being 18 like yo I'm I can't I can't fully process it haunts me to this day I'm like you know you'll never get listen you never will get shade or judgment from Melissa and I but that was a lot that's That's a lot anything that's (laughs) literally yeah. Oh my gosh. I did have an experience. This is one of like my first five, three, five experiences last year, early last year. Went to this guy's apartment here in Brooklyn. Really nice apartment. Um, he was a nice guy. What he's like, you know, acts very dominant. Like he's the dom, but then I'm like, you're not, you're not. <laughs> I know what's happening here. And so he's he got his like whole shtick. He's very like, do this now, sit over there. It was like very really, like he's like, sit on that end of the couch. Now bend over that thing. I'm like, it's really rigid. I'm like, this is it's not. It's like, okay, got him right. I'm getting there. I'm just gonna, okay. And then Simon he's laying says. on the ground. He's laying on the ground. I'm like squatting over him and he's eating me out. And then he's like, he just <laughs> he just whispers, be on my face, be on my face. And I was like, I didn't know what to say. So I just looked at water day, sir. I was like, uh, I don't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> and he just caught me off guard. I'm, like, I'm a bit dehydrated. <laughs> and it told me I would have brought my camel back. <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> hold on, hold on, sir. I am dead. Oh, that's it. I don't yeah. have to go. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do because I don't have to go. <laughs> that is hilarious yeah because i obviously can't say no to anything i'm like too open so i just said instead uh, maybe next time yeah but is that the work was- you do in in new york is it we could say new york right i feel like we already said that um is it legal or like how do you get around that um so it's like partially decriminalized i think right now mm-hmm. like as of sometime last year they started working on decriminalizing it I don't know exactly where they're at but I don't think you can like prosecute um like prostitution anymore or something but it's not it's not fully legal but it's on its way to being legal so um where even is it legal besides Nevada is it just Nevada I don't know actually that's a good google question so the website that you're on like do you have to pay to be on it you work like do you work Uh, independently and so people just reach out to you you pay to be on it um like you can pay like depending on the subscription you want I pay a little more so that I have like more access um and it's all yeah it's all just me but before I did this because you know I I don't want to be one of the horror stories from this website or from any 
sex work thing where you meet someone and it's you get taken advantage of and all that shit so I did a ton of research I was like reading a bunch of forums I was like on YouTube I was doing I was on all these blogs just figuring out like the smartest way to go about this and so like I have you know like a different name a different email address a fake phone number um I'm very clear about meeting in public first um all these things to like protect myself and you know never give out any information that could like you know my credit card or like people ask for it you'd think it's crazy but people ask will ask you to like they'll try and get your bank account information and obviously people someone's falling for it because yep. otherwise <laughs> it wouldn't be a thing so just hey girl me- read the room read the room <laughs> like just don't do that just don't do that it's like the people get scammed over the phone it's like do you think the government's going to take the time to reach out to you personally? <laughs> that shit don't happen, bro. They're busy. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not stressing. If they're asking you for 25 hundo, it's not the government. That Nigerian <laughs> prince that shows up in your email. <laughs> like, sorry, sir. This is not coming to America. You're going to have to figure this one out on your own. When, like, yeah. shit is, like, not grammatically correct or typed, like, fucking That's yeah. the first correctly. Red f- Even on dating funny. apps, I'm like, left, scammer, scammer, scammer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the I, uh, pictures are too good to be true. They're hella grainy. I'm like, bro, you're a model in the <laughs> Ukraine. Like, stop. Yeah, for sure. My, so, uh, I tried to get some friends into this because I'm like, guys, this is great. This is great. <laughs> it's fun. It's easy. It's turns out it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, I've just had an easy time. Yeah. Um, I have one friend who is doing this and is it's going well for her. Um, but the other people just couldn't, they just weren't comfortable with it. And also, yeah. you know, sh- a little shallow. Yeah. Imagine sleeping with someone that isn't like super hot. They're super attracted to, which isn't part of the deal here. You're like, you're doing, it's more than that. Yeah. Um, and so that's been, that's been interesting to realize that it is a little bit more challenging than I had. Because for me, it's just like dating, but it's like a little extra, you know, it's a little, you get dating with extra perks. I mean, even dating can be complicated. Yeah. And um, so turns out, you know, not not everybody, (laughs) it's not for, it's not for everybody. It's not easy for everybody. (laughs) I can imagine people are like, oh, this sounds like, you know, the grass is green on the other side. They get into it and they're like, no, this just isn't for me, you know? Yeah. It's, um, and I, and I get it because it's a lot of work. It's a lot demanding of you mentally and emotionally and physically obviously but the physical part is like the least demanding yeah for me it's the the mental and you know the compartmentalizing parts of my life um that you know I'm still trying to navigate uh you know I I want to be embraced for who I am fully with everybody but this is something that's such a like you know, fragile topic that I can't t- just tell everybody about it. Yeah. It's like, it's like addressing like spirituality <laughs> or politics or something, you know, like yeah. you just, you have to sort of get a feel for what, for the room before you mention anything. Yeah. Um, How do you kind of take care of your <clears throat> like physical and mental? Like what are some of your, the things that you do? to make sure you're like, you know, tuned in with yourself? Um, I'm really, I'm big into meditating. I'm very spiritual. I work out a lot. I mm-hmm. just do things that make me like feel in my body. Yeah. Um, I'm a musician and an artist. So I, I write a lot of music. I do things that are like good for my soul. Um, and yeah, I, it hasn't been, it was hard at first getting into this because I was learning how to navigate all the, you know, just how to make everything work in my yeah. in sex work life and then in my real life and then how to like have the bleed over the crossover in some ways. And, um, but yeah, I just do a lot. I have a lot of me time, a lot of downtime. That's good. That's really important to just stay yeah. connected to yourself, you know? Yeah. I'm so it, it, were, it took me a minute to figure out what I needed. I f- thought I was, you know, for, I was losing my mind a couple of times, but now I've sort of got it. 
Good. I'm glad. I, w- I did want to ask you, I know you said with the like certain things you do to keep yourself safe. Did you, you might've said this, but do you like share your location? Do you carry weapon? Like you got a Glock on you? Like, <laughs> like real um, talk. I have a knife that yeah. my friend gave me. Um, I haven't had any situations where I feel, I mean, I just carry that anyways, because I live in New York. And exactly. <laughs> I'm and driving the train at night can be a little sketchy, but yeah, you never know. Uh, but I haven't had, that's, you know, I set it up to be really safe. I set up that we meet in public first. Uh, and then if you, you know, you just catch a vibe for someone. It's like, in that way, it's like dating. Like you meet at a bar, you meet at a coffee shop, and then you can sort of tell, like, is this something that's going to work? Or is this person creepy? Like you can, you just use your intuition there. And like, yeah, and I seem just, very tapped into that, which is really good. It, I think it's crucial for this because you are it is such a vulnerable thing and i think often times when you do something like this out of a place of desperation that's yeah. when it leads to something um that could get icky but you know we all have different life circumstances and i'm just lucky enough that it, i haven't had that feeling of desperation in this way yeah that's a um, good point so yeah you know, i don't think that I think there are stereotypes in sex work where people assume like you had, you know, you're like down and out or you've been abused or whatever. And I, I think that does exist, but there's also a lot of other ways to like maneuver this world. And I think it, you know, I, I feel like what I do is like, I feel very spoiled because <laughs> I don't have, I haven't had bad experiences. I haven't, felt taken advantage of um I waited you know till my late 20s to get into it and I think that is part of it yeah just kind of already getting doing all the like getting all that dumb shit out of the way early on yeah but I do you know I really hope that more sex workers have the experience like I'm having because it's really empowering and it's I feel safe and secure and taken care of by myself and by these men. And I hope that people are having those experiences. It makes me sad to think that it could be, you know, yeah, not glorious. <laughs> yeah. Cause there are women that I'm sure are doing, you know, stuff out of desperation to feed their families or, yeah. you know, and, um, but I definitely think like that is a, a big misconception where like we talked about, you know, everybody's on drugs when they're doing it, everybody's yeah. like out of their mind and that's why they're able just to like, let it happen. Or it's, you know, everybody's sexually assaulted as kids. Like, yeah. you know, that's just an overgeneralization. I think that that's out there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm pretty much always sober doing this unless I've got to know someone and we like have dinner and drinks or something. Mm-hmm. But it's not something I want to like be out of my body for. Yep. I want to experience it. That's when so. it gets dangerous. Yeah. And I, there was a guy that wanted, he's like Wall Street dude. He wanted to just party and he, he didn't tell me this <laughs> beforehand. So we meet in Brooklyn, we go to this hotel. He's fun. He's young. We I was having fun with him. We had drinks and, I felt totally safe. We get back to the room and he pulls out like a baggie of cocaine. He's like, do you want to, like, as if like that was just expected that we were going to like party. And I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not really into drugs. And and (laughs) just being the, just being me, I was like, well, you can start a line off my nipple if you want. (laughs) (laughs) If you want me to be involved. (laughs) The one on each. <laughs> Go ahead. Get it. <laughs> so that was, you know, that was interesting. Like he was, that was sort of a stereotype, fulfilled a stereotype scenario. Yeah, he was trying to be a Wolf of Wall Street. He was just, yeah, he was trying to get like okay, Jordan Belfort, high. calm down. Yeah, and just like fuck, like he just wanted like boop 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 boop. Like I was like, this is bing 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 bing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. huh? I don't understand, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Part of your experience too, since it's been very positive, is like you came into this with like very clear, like expectations, boundaries, like what you wanted to get out of it. You obviously are putting a lot of time and thought into like how to make this the safest for you and um, really compassionate for the the clients that you're serving and mm-hmm. like what they need and want out of it. And so I think that 
overall, it's like you are helping people. You're helping yourself like mm-hmm. explore parts of yourself that have been unexplored. So it's like, it's such an empowering and like positive experience. And again, there are plenty of experiences that are not like that. And we recognize that, but I think that, you know, those can't be the only stories told, right? Like we have to be able to tell these stories of like someone owning their bodies, owning their choices and and creating consent and creating these, like breaking down these like emotional traumas that for your clients and for yourself. And it's, that's super important uh, work that you're doing. So I think it's, it's cool that you're on here sharing it. I know that I feel super honored to be in your presence right now fuck yeah me too for having me i haven't talked about it in this capacity yet so this is cool i do have a question organizing it for myself in my head (laughs) yeah of course um i do have a question like so obviously stds are always going to be something that you're concerned about right what are like the precautions that you take what are the expectations that you have of your clients um always use condoms um a lot of men expect not to especially because they're paying and if that's the kind of person they are then I'm just like well I can't, there's no trust here I'm open to eventually not using them but we both need to get tested first yeah and yeah. agree to use condoms with everybody else so the scenario I'm in right now with this guy is we both got tested we don't use condoms but anyone else that I sleep with I use a condom and he doesn't sleep with anyone else but his um, wife and so it's really there's that like mutual trust and respect there, but I'm very, I get tested every other month just in case I'm really, you know, um, adamant about my sexual health. I'm making sure like I'm checking in with my body all the time, <laughs> take my vaginal probiotics. Yes, baby. <laughs> Those are life changing. <laughs> all the things, um, because that is a huge scare and, I, and people don't talk enough about it. Like my, you know, I've, I've had to call a lot of hotlines, STD hotlines, panicking that I, you know, because this guy, he had a wart on his dick and I went down to, to give him head. And I was just like, oh my God, you, hey, how did you, how'd you <laughs> notice this? <laughs> how did I notice it first? Like, I know your hand's been on your dick all day, bro. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So that just shattered the trust because he acted like he didn't know. And I'm like, you knew that was there. Yeah. And we had been seeing each other for a few months and I was like, it's not a big deal, but get it taken care of. Just be upfront about it. Go yeah. to the doctor, have them burn it off and then everything's fine. Yeah. And we don't have to worry about it. But so, you know, there's, I've encountered things like that. Um, I, I, you know, haven't contracted anything, but that's just cause I'm really, really safe. And now I make a habit of like inspecting everyone's dick quietly. Let me get on my <laughs> <laughs> they don't know let me see here, that pull out that dick pull out that dick. gloves on <laughs> yeah mask gloves <laughs> bend over cough <laughs> you're good let's do this let's ride yeah, all right let's get it. Let's get it. Um, Shit, i'm doing that for free so <laughs> uh yeah what do you so see I, so this whole field like obviously this sounds like it's been such a positive experience um like where do you see yourself in 10 years that's you know, what I'm figuring out right now, honestly. I've been like, okay, it's been over a year. I'm having a good time. This has been fun. I, I know there's an expiration date on this. I, for me, I don't plan to do this that much longer. Um, I, I don't know personally like what my work life is going to be. I'm, yeah. I'm focusing on music right now and some healing work. And um, you know, I have options. I just have to figure out what it is I want first um but in 10 years I'd like to have a family you know I want to have kids um I want a partner um and yeah I think this is just like part of my life's journey and uh I'm not sure I'm not sure what I'll do for money after this I've worked in restaurants forever and I recently stopped doing that oh girl welcome sort of (laughs) <laughs> teetering like I, I can always go back to a restaurant I can always there's always ways to make money but right now I'm sort of trying to exist in this like limbo this in between which is hard for me I've always worked a lot so to just be sex work as you know have that as my only source of income is sort of unsettling for me because it yeah. wasn't the plan but I'm trying to embrace it and just like 
you know, I'm fortunate that it allows me to afford a really great apartment. I live alone. I have a car. I have things are taken care of. Yeah. Um, but I know like eventually I'm going to have to find another way to support myself. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just not really sure what that is yet. <laughs> yeah. You're, so. you're giving yourself the opportunity to explore that and that's beautiful. You know, yeah. you're, you're and being in an in-between yourself. place. Mm-hmm. It's scary to be in an in-between place, but that's where you really grow. You know, I don't yeah. want to be those corny people that has a like, you know, sign on my door. That's like comfort zone, like where you grow. <laughs> But you know what I mean? I love that sign. Dude, it's so true. (laughs) There's so many teacher friends of mine that have it. I'm like, y'all, come on. But but it's it's true. true. It's 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 so true. It's a really hard place to be. I'm I'm like a very goal-oriented person. I have a plan. I get I go from here to here and I'm there. And then okay, done. Moving on to the next thing. So I'm having a really hard time (laughs) just staying put. Um and I'm actually like work with Heather on that. Uh, she's amazing best. she's amazing she really is a life changer yeah. but uh yeah so it's that's been the hardest part for me now is realizing okay the things I want are changing um I'm starting to want to have a relationship again I haven't wanted one in years um I'm starting to want like some autonomy like I want to make money in a different way as well as this but I don't know what that is yet so I'm it's a weird place, but I'm, yeah. you know, figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. Sounds awesome. It sounds like you're on the right path. Yes. We'll see you guys. I really, you know, I don't you know really- what, if you're on the wrong one, you can get right off. <laughs> yeah. My I've path never- has been like this. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. And who knows now? It's, it's like hopscotch. I think hopscotch yeah. as a kid was like preparing us for the shit. <laughs> yeah. The one thing about life I know is when you think you got it all figured out, life's like, ha ha. And then anal comes no, in. Absolutely. Like, oh. <laughs> the big fucking I'm... fist goes right up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, cool. So is there anything? Sorry, Stacey, did you have anything else? No, that you just, all my questions have been answered. It's perfect. Yeah, I, I, all of my questions and more. This has been amazing. But is yeah. there anything, Emma, that you want to like, uh, end with any last words that you ha- want to share with people about sex work in general? I don't, I don't think so. I have, I mean, I have a lot of respect for people that put themselves out there in this way. So I want mm-hmm. everyone to feel like heard and felt that is either in sex work or is so it's something they're curious about. Like I'd like to let people know there is a safe space that you can where you can engage in this and it doesn't have to be shameful or it doesn't have to be icky or something um and I feel grateful that I have this I've had this opportunity and this experience and I don't take it lightly because I know it hasn't been this way for everybody so um it's just been a you know it's been a really cool way to get to know myself and to develop a lot more compassion and empathy for other people um, in the process. That's beautiful. That is really beautiful. That was a perfect way to end it. (laughs) I think too, like also, loud ass car just went by. I think also (laughs) it's like helping client, like potential clients know that this is a safe space to explore parts of themselves sexually. So maybe it is people that have had you know, traumatic sexual experiences and they're trying to figure out what does feel good to them. And it's hard because you're, you can be insecure in a relationship and then that can ruin certain dynamics and like relationships that you really care about. And it's like, this could also be an opportunity for them to explore what they like and what they don't like. And, you know, I think like really shattering sexual repression is a big thing because when you're repressed, that's when the icky stuff happens. That's yes, like, it's true. That's when you develop weird things and you become creepy and you do creepy things and then or you become like angry and a curmudgeon and resentful. So think, resentful, all these things. So and I, I felt that in myself and when I was younger, because I would just get wasted and do weird shit. And I'm like, this is just my sexual repression, <laughs> my yeah. sexual self trying to be seen and heard. And I'm denying it in my day to day. So it just comes out when I'm blackout drunk and I do yeah. something insane and I'm in mortified afterwards. Yeah. So I think like we need no more no more repression. No <laughs> Let more it out. Repression. We're burning our fucking bras, no y'all. <laughs> 
fucking lighting our chonies on fire <laughs> when we wear them just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well thank you thank you so much for your time sharing this like time yeah, with us you. and, and yourself yeah. like this is thank this has been amazing better than i expected same thank i'm so me. i'm so great. grateful thank you i hope i yeah sorry i talk so much <laughs> no girl you killed it mic drop for real <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but yeah appreciate you so much i hope you enjoy the rest of your day thank you thank you, you so much thank you all right we'll talk soon okay yes. Bye. Bye.